This is Gigi the cat. She's sitting on top of my printer. This is a neon bulb. Half the neon bulb is connected to a metal plate. The other half is connected to ground. I'm going to place my hand on the metal plate and pet my kitty. And we're going to see the triboelectric effect. Hey, pal. I know. I know, buddy. I know, kidders. I know. I'm petting the kitty. I'm getting flashes on my bulb. Oh, poor little kitty. As you can see, every time I make contact with the cat and take my hand away, the neon bulb lights up. That means the neon bulb is getting 90 volts of electricity, but the amperage is extraordinarily low. It only takes one third of one milliamp to light a neon bulb. I know. And just the fact that my hand is coming in contact with fur and then pulling away is enough electron, gosh, what would you call it, transfer, electron transfer from one material to another. And it directionally goes through the bulb and lights it up. Good kitty. I know. I know. Somebody's getting too many electrons and they're flowing through the bulb. Good girl. <laughs> okay, kitty. Experiment's over. Gigi and I just finished showing you the triboelectric effect. And I thought you'd like a closer look at the metal plate I was using. It's the bottom of an old-fashioned telephone. It's a conductive metal plate. And on the bottom it has uh, rubber feet. Insulating it from the table it's sitting on. And the neon bulb, if you're unfamiliar with it, has two probes in it, uh, and they're separated by an air gap, and there's neon gas inside the vacuum tube. There's a red and black wire. The red wire just goes to the metal plate. It's just screwed onto the metal plate. And the black wire just goes through a hole here in the bottom of the plate and travels down to a grounding point. And that's all there is to it.